everyone in this video we are going to see the summary and analysis of the poem prologue to canterbury tales written by geoffrey chaucer chaucer was an english writer his period was between 1343 and 1400 now let's see his biography he was an english poet author and civil servant and also a philosopher astronomer bureaucrat courtier diplomat and member of parliament He was born in 1343 in London, England. He has been called the father of English literature and also the father of English poetry. His important works are The Book of the Duchess, The House of Fame, The Legend of Good Women, Troilus and Cressida, and The Canterbury Tales. In 1366 he married Philippa Rett. He died on 25th October 1400 in London, England. After his death he was buried in Poets Corner in Westminster Abbey in London. Now let's see a brief introduction about Prologue to Canterbury Tales written by Chaucer. It consists of 858 lines. It is about his pilgrimage to Canterbury with 29 pilgrims. Here in this picture we see the pilgrims who gathered in the Tabard Inn in Southwark to start their pilgrimage. The literary career of Chaucer was divided into three parts. They are French period, Italian period, and English period. His Canterbury Tales is the great work of the English period. In 1373, he began to write his Canterbury Tales. He borrowed the idea for Canterbury Tales from Boccaccio's Decameron and an Italian writer, Sir Comoy. This poem is about his pilgrimage to Canterbury with 29 pilgrims. The prologue is the introductory part to Canterbury Tales. It suggests the framework of the Canterbury Tales. It paints a picture of the national life of the time of Chaucer. It shows Chaucer's humanism, humor and realism. It graphically describes all the 32 pilgrims including the innkeeper and Chaucer who started a pilgrimage from the Tabard Inn in Southwark to the shrine of St Thomas a Becket in Canterbury. A company of pilgrims from all over England gathered in the Tabard Inn in Southwark. They are the knight, the square, the yeoman, the prioress, the monk, the friar, the merchant, the clerk of Oxford, the surgeon of law, the franklin, the haberdasher, the carpenter, the weaver, the dyer, the upholsterer, the cook, the shipman, the doctor of physic, the wife of bath the parson the plowman the miller the mansipal the reeve the summoner the pordoner the chaser the host a nun and three priest the prayeress was accompanied by these nun and three priests these pilgrims were from all over england they belonged to various social classes and different status This picture shows the appearance of the pilgrims. Now let's see the summary of the prologue which consists of 858 lines. It was the month of April and the season was spring. Chaucer planned to go for a pilgrimage to Canterbury to seek the blessings of the holy martyr St Thomas a Becket. He reached the Tabard Inn in Southwark. At night 29 pilgrims from all over England arrived at inn for the same purpose the innkeeper or the host Harry Bailey entertained them and accommodated them in the inn here in this picture we see the host of the inn and also the pilgrims who gathered in the Tabard inn on that night Chaucer made friends with them at supper the host of the inn proposes that On their journey to Canterbury each of them should tell two tales from this side and two more on their return journey to relieve the tediousness of the way the host offers to travel with them and to act as the master of ceremonies other pilgrims are to submit their judgment of who tells the best story this picture shows as the pilgrims eating supper in the tabard inn given by the host The host says that in the end he will finalize the best storyteller. The best storyteller among them is to be given a supper at the general expense. This decision is accepted by all and they set out on their journey early next morning. 
lots are drawn to decide who shall tell the first tale and the lot falls to the knight before starting their journey chaucer describes the characters habits dress etc of all these pilgrims one by one these are portrayed elaborately in this prologue the prologue contains the description of all these pilgrims their appearance behavior habits dresses costumes etc now let's see them one by one the first one is the knight he was a warrior a military man who fought in many battles he was a very perfect gentleman and also a worthy fellow who loved truth honor freedom and courtesy at feast he sat at the head of the table he fought in 15 deadly battles for the sake of christian faith he wore a coat of coarse cloth all covered with dust because he just returned from the war the next one is the square he was a young man the son of the knight he was a lover and merry bachelor with curly locks he was a brave soldier who fought in many battles hoping to win his lady's love he wore an embroidered garment he was always singing and fluting he composed songs too and recited them he was as fresh as the month of may he was a skillful horse rider and can dance paint and write well the next person is the yeoman he was an assistant or bodyguard of the knight he wore a coat and a green hood he carried a sheaf of peacock arrows under his belt his head was close cropped and his face was brown he was well versed in woodcraft he wore a bright arm guard upon his arm and a figure of saint christopher on his breast he was a true forester who carried a hunting horn always the next person is the prioress she was a nun who was very simple and quiet in smiling her name is madam eglantine she had her greatest oath was by saint loy she spoke french wonderfully she sang god's prayer in a charming nasal tone she was well versed in table manners she ate very neatly and cautiously and wiped her upper lip so clean she was dignified in all her dealings she was so charitable and compassionate she would weep if she saw even a mouse caught in a trap she had some little dogs she wore an elegant cloak a coral trinket on her arm and a set of beads upon which hung a brooch of shining gold on which was engraved a crown a and the latin phrase omer vincit omnia which means love conquers all she had another nun and three priests with her the next person is the monk he was a fashionable man and also a fat lord he had many horses in his stable he gave importance to hunting and seeking pleasures he ignored the old and strict rule of saint maur or saint benedict he wore a garment lined with finest fur his hood was fastened with an ornamental golden pin his boots were made of soft leather he was a fair prelate or clergyman of high rank the next person is the friar he was a wanton and merry friar he was a greatest flatterer he performed the marriages of many women at his own cost he had friendship with rich landlords and wealthy people he had more authority to hear confessions than a parson his view was that if a man gave gift or money to a poor order of friars it was a sufficient proof of repentance according to him weeping and praying was of no avail his bag was full of pins and knives which he gave them to the beautiful women he sang in a sweet voice and played fiddle excellently he dressed himself like a master or a pope his habit was to lisp a little so that his english might sound sweet he was known as hubert the next person is the merchant he sat on a high horse he always talked of his own profit he was well versed in business transactions at the exchange he was in debt but nobody knew that he was an intelligent merchant the next person is the clerk of oxford he had devoted himself to the study of logic he was not a worldly man 
his garments were worn out he paid more attention to books and learning than clothes he spent all his money on books he spoke only as much as was needed his words were full of meaning and wisdom he would gladly learn and gladly teach the next person is the sergeant of law he was a shrewd and wise lawyer he served as a judge at the sessions of the law courts he had earned much money and rich robes with his learning and fame he was very efficient in his job nobody could find any fault in the legal documents prepared by him he knew every statute by heart the next person is the franklin he was a land owner and freeholder his beard was as white as daisy and his complexion was as red as blood he loved the life of pleasures for he was the very son of the epicurus in hospitality he was like saint julian he changed his food and supper according to the change of seasons he had his mew full of partridges and pond full of fish at the sittings of law court he was lord and master he had served as a sheriff and an auditor the next person is the haberdasher he was a member of the haberdasher's livery company then comes the carpenter the weaver the dyer and the upholsterer the upholsterer is the craftsman who makes furniture these five persons that is the haberdasher the carpenter the weaver the dyer and the upholsterer they dressed in the livery of their own community their equipments were up to date their knives mounted with silver they were noted for their wisdom and experience they had enough goods and income their wives liked to be called madam the next person is the cook he could boil the chickens with marrow bones and hot spices and sweet roots he could roast boil broil fry and make a delicious soup and bake a tasty pie he knew the taste of london ale very well he had a sore on his chin the next person is the shipman he was a good fellow who came from dartmouth his complexion was brown his dress was of rough stuff his dagger was hanging on a string from his neck he was well versed in the position of the moon tides currents perils of the seas harbors and pilotage he was very shrewd and brave in his enterprises his ship was called the modelin the next person is the doctor of physic he was matchless in medicine and surgery he was well instructed in astronomy he had the knowledge of old medical philosophers like esculapius rufus and galen he took very moderate diet but nourishing and easily digestible diet his study in the bible was very little he was dressed in red and blue gown he spent money moderately he had a special love for gold the next character is the wife of bath she was a little deaf who was a worthy woman she was very talented in cloth making she was the first woman always to make offerings at the church her garments were attractive and nicely embroidered she had married five husbands in addition to other companions in her youth she visited many places like bolon galicia and colon she was a gap tooth who wore a fine wimple and a hat she liked to laugh and chat the next person is the parson he was a poor priest but a good man of religion he was rich in holy thought and work he took pleasure in teaching his parishioners he used to help his poor parishioners out of his church income he set a noble example to his parishioners he was ever first to act and then to teach he followed the teaching of the bible he stayed in his parish and looked to the welfare of his people he always inspired his people godward if any one was obstinate he would scold him sharply for the time being the next person is the plowman he was the brother of the parson he was a true and good worker always he loved god wholeheartedly he helped others to the best of his capabilities he paid his debts in full and in due time the next person is the miller 
He was a stout fellow who always got a prize in wrestling matches. His beard was as red as a sow or a fox. His nostrils were white and black and his mouth was as wide as a great furnace. He was a sinful and rude fellow. He could blow and play upon a bagpipe. Then the next person is the manciple. He was a person in charge of purchasing and storing food items in the monastery. He was a wise buyer of provisions. He was always very watchful in doing purchase. Always he made his purchases a good bargain. He had more than 30 masters. He befooled them all. The next character is the Reeve. He was a local officer, a farm bailiff. He was a soft, irritable man. His head was shaven like that of a priest. His legs were long and lean like a stick. He knew well whether there was a drought or rain, how much the yield of harvest would be. No one knew about his trickery and deceit. He could make purchases better than his lord and he could please his lord craftily and got goods and gowns from him. He was a good workman, a carpenter. The next person is the summoner. He had a fiery red face with red pimples. He was hot and wanton as sparrow. Children were afraid of his appearance. He loved garlic, onions and leeks with strong red wine. When drunk, he would shout like a madman and spoke a few words of Latin. For a quart of wine, he would gladly lend his mistress to his friend for 12 months. He knew the secrets and wishes of the young people of his diocese and acted as their advisor. Then the next person is the partner. He came singing, come hither, love to me. His wallet was full of pardons, which he had brought straight from Rome. He posed to have many holy relics in his bag, and by exhibiting these, he earned more money in a day than a parson in two months. He could read a passage and tell a story very well. He sang an offertory hymn. He had the talent to attract others through his speech. The next person is Chaucer, the writer of this poem. He narrates how they passed that night in that inn. At first, he apologizes for his frankness. He tells the status, the dress, the appearance, the character and the number of the pilgrims. He asks the pilgrims to tell the stories as the instruction given by the host. Here, he quoted Plato's words. The words should be as cousin to the deed. The last person is the host or the innkeeper. He was a striking man fit to be a marshal in a hall. He was a broad man with bright eyes and full of manhood. He was bold of speech, wise and well instructed. He was a merry man. After supper, he entertained all with wit and mirth. His name is Harry Bailey. He suggested a plan to avoid the boredom of the long journey of the pilgrimage. To shorten the journey, each would tell two tales on their move to Canterbury and two more tales on their way back. Each tale should be the tale of the happenings of the past. The most excellent storyteller would have a supper at the cost of all. The host would act as their friend and guide. His suggestion was accepted by all the pilgrims. Early next morning, they started their pilgrimage. Who would narrate two tales first was decided by the draw of lords. In this draw, it fell upon the knight to begin. The knight gladly began his tale. This picture shows the journey of the pilgrims. Early next morning, they started their pilgrimage from Tabard Inn in Southwark and journeying towards Canterbury. Till now, we have seen the summary of Prologue to Canterbury Tales written by Chaucer. Now let's see the analysis of the poem. Chaucer's Prologue is a picture gallery of the 14th century England. The portrayal of 30 pilgrims gives us an excellent idea of the society at that time. Chaucer has painted the entire contemporary English society in this prologue. It shows that the medieval society is in the process of disintegration. The knight and the square represent the old tradition of chivalry. The days of chivalry had been almost gone during that period. 
the ecclesiastical figures like the friar the monk and the pardoner give a picture of the decadence of the medieval church there are both good and bad elements in every society chaucer gave a true picture of the realities of the society at that time the merchant and the guild members represent the future rise of england as a commercial power then the prologue shows chaucer's humanism humor and realism chaucer conveys a strong sense of individuality in each character he describes the opinions the activities and the dwelling places of all these characters he portrays the religious characters like the monk the nun the summoner and the prioress as hypocritical and mean through them he highlights the corruption in the religious order of the day in the middle ages women played a prominent part in wool industry chaucer shows this through the wife of bath the setting of the poem is highly realistic a pilgrimage used to be the most common sight in those days chaucer blended laughter and tears as he actually found them in life his storytelling is like a voracious picture of real life it reveals the dramatic power of chaucer through the stories of the wife of bath the friar and the pardoner we can see the dramatic power of chaucer it has been assumed that chaucer himself took part in a pilgrimage in april of 1387 because of the illness of his wife philippa who died a few months later the purpose of writing the prologue was chaucer's desire to represent the 14th century social life realistically and graphically each pilgrim is representative of his class all the broad social classes boring the lowest and the highest are colorfully gathered together in the prologue chaucer was the first poet to create living human characters in english literature his characters are as real today as they were in chaucer's day till now in this video we have seen the summary and analysis of the poem prologue to canterbury tales written by chaucer hope you would have understood it very clearly thank you for listening